What's going on guys? I have some more UTSA Offline Dynasty here today on NCAA Football 13. And uh, someone mentioned in the comment section in the last episode that I have to start being a little bit more consistent in this in this series if I want to end up making UTSA a powerhouse or a stronger team and move into a bigger conference. And he's right. I gotta start posting this series more. And so I think after I wrap up Vikings franchise, you're gonna see me focus on this series a lot more along with the Raiders Connected Careers, which I've definitely stepped up the episode making in that series as well. And so if you're enjoying the series, please do leave a like, guys. But here we are playing as UTEP, and of course we have not played a team yet with a losing record, and we have a combined, I think, opponent's record of like 16-2, and two, or it's worse than that, I'm not sure exactly. But their quarterback is Carson Megger, and I was looking at some UTEP highlights before this episode to figure out how to pronounce his last name, make sure I was doing it right, and he's a lefty. Does this game even have left-handed quarterbacks? He's throwing right-handed here, obviously. He's going long on third and one. It's out of bounds, and that's going to bring up fourth down. UTSA's defense starts this game off with a hold. And now handoff Evans Okacha up the gut, maybe two yards on the carry, but he is holding his shoulder it looks like. The trainers come out, the medical staff, and I believe we'll have an update on him soon, but now it's second and eight. Eric Souza finds a tight end, Jeremiah Moeller, a quick out route, and it's good for a first down for UTSA. Second down and seven for Souza. Now quick outside to Cam Jones. Soft coverage there, the curl route, nice sit down route on the first down marker. It's a first down. And so Souza back in the pocket now, great protection, only a three-man rush. Doesn't like what he sees downfield, so he takes off with his legs and he gets about seven yards close to another first down. Now third and three, looking for the conversion to keep this drive moving. And once more taking off first down and more fighting for extra yards, not electing the slide, but instead absorbs the, pre uh, absorbs the hits. And now second and 13, Souza going long for Cam Jones, and the route is jumped and picked off. If I put a little bit more air underneath that one and let him a little bit better, probably could have been a touchdown, but the defensive backs are really unforgiving on Heisman difficulty. And so the UTEP Miners are back on offense. That's Nathan Jeffrey making the catch now. Third and five for Carson Megger over the middle to Patterson, and it's short of the first down, and UTSA holds once more. Now Souza hands the ball off to David Glasgow, who will be the starter now that Okacha is out for two weeks. I guess I didn't show the update in the episode, but he's out for the next two weeks. That drive would result in a punt, and now it's UTEP football again. Carson Megger takes off. We miss him, and then he's going to take some hits himself at about the 47, 48-yard line. Now second down and two, and the read option gets us to bite, and that's our defensive end crashing and just... Look at him run down the field inside the 10. It's first down and goal as we look to bring some pressure. Megger under pressure, and there is Steven Kerfis forcing the fumble. It's picked up by Neal, and look at the big man go. He's running. He's going to get midfield and more, breaking a tackle and down at the 40-yard line of UTEP. Steven Kerfis, probably our best overall player. You can see we send both of these linebackers, and Kerfis has to hurdle over the running back, and then Carson Megger never stood the chance. He's definitely our best player, and he forces a very key turnover in the red zone, but our running game is definitely suffering a blow now, but not much you can do when you're getting hit in the backfield. Souza on second and 12, wide open, coming across the middle on the slant was Brandon Freeman, and he had plenty of open space, and with that, he has one yard more in his career than Cam Jones. We'll probably see that go back and forth for quite a bit now. Souza to the end zone, first and goal, looking for Cam Jones. Would have been the new record in career pat uh, receiving yards for UTSA, but he can't hang on to the touchdown. And then David Glasgow takes a stretch handoff, and he just takes a shoulder and is down after getting maybe a yard. After that, we had a delay of game penalty, and now third and goal from beyond the 10-yard line. Souza goes short to David Glasgow, and he is tackled at the 6-yard line. And if I was a little bit more patient there, I had Cam Jones getting open on his deep in. And so I got to be a lot more patient in the passing game, especially because uh, Heisman's unforgiving and you have to make the most out of your opportunities you get. So Carson Megger back on offense now facing a 3-0 deficit over the middle to Malcolm Trail for a first down into UTSA territory. Actually, they're on midfield now. Second and 10 is still playing zone coverage. Carson Megger loads up, goes long on the right side. It's hauled in by Jordan Leslie as Tristan Wade was slow coming over. And it's a UTEP touchdown as they get on the board for the first time with a minute 20 to go in the first half. Now UTSA wants to see what they can do with a little bit of time left. Going long for Freeman, it's tipped away. 
That brings up a second down and 10 now with 44 seconds to go. Souza back in the pocket over the middle. Cam Jones wide open. First down on top of the UTEP logo as we have an opportunity perhaps to get some more points. Third and eight for Eric Souza. Not very much downfield open. And then he takes off and is going to get the first down. Once again, not sliding and not fumbling at least. Seven seconds to go now. Spread out the field. Four wide receivers. Souza back in the pocket. Dumps underneath to David Glasgow. He's going to be tackled out of bounds with three seconds to go. And here I had to make a decision. Sean Ayano's leg is not that strong. And so what I wanted to do was sneak for maybe one or two yards, call a timeout and kick a field goal. And instead, they leave us open room and Eric Souza fights for extra yards and we can't do it. So it was a risk and uh, it didn't pay off. So Souza back on offense to begin the second half. On third and 15, he scrambles to buy extra time and finds a wide open Jeremiah Moeller. That's a conversion, my friend. Z gets out of bounds now. And then first and 10, Souza wanted the roll to his right and make it a shorter route to get the ball to Moeller. And that ended up resulting in an 8-yard sack. Now third and 18, Souza takes a snap out of the shotgun. Lobbing it deep downfield. It's hauled in by Josiah Monroe. He beat the cornerback or the safety somebody on UTEP's defense. It's a UTSA touchdown, two huge third down conversions on that drive, and it's 10-0 runners. Carson Mager back on offense to Tomlinson over the middle. That's going to be right in front of Tristan Wade for a first down. You see, he's been pretty efficient on this day so far. Now trail in motion, takes the handoff on the jet sweep, and he is tackled in the backfield for a loss of five. I believe that was Nick Johnston. I could be wrong, though. Then they hand the ball off to Nathan Jeffrey up the middle, and our safety took a bad angle at him and allowed him to get the first down. So now play action for Magri. He's going to go long downfield again, and Leslie is obviously their deep threat. Another deep ball goes to him as he beat Eric Brown in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Now second down in goal. Mager hands ball off to Nathan Jeffrey. And Stephen Kerf is a very sure tackler. Saves a touchdown there. Causing third down in goal. Now goal line set. Perry going out split left. Carson Mager play action. Lobs to the end zone. And it's caught. And they're going to rule him out of bounds. That was Craig Wenrick, the tight end. What a throw and catch this was. But it looked like he was just out of bounds. And here's an update here. Iowa over Michigan State. Big Ten, uh, two ranked opponents going at it. But here he is. He's a huge height advantage. The ball is thrown very nicely. Wenrick, you can see, he jumps up here. The catch is made. Now watch the feet. Down. But it looks like he has a Des Bryant fingertip out of bounds. Just barely out of bounds, it looks like. And they rule him out of bounds. But it was very close, so they go to a booth review. And we're going to take another look at it here. But this angle isn't as good as the first one I showed you guys. But you can see it kind of looks from this angle that he was in bounds first. But let's hear what the official has to say. And so the overturn call results in an interception. I think he's out of bounds by a Des Bryant fingertip. But it's 14-10 now in favor of UTEP late in the third quarter. Second down and five coming up for Eric Souza as he's going to go underneath. That's Jeremiah Moeller coming free as he gets the first down. And passing game is playing pretty well this game, making up for the lack of a run game with no Okacha. Now handoff to Anthony Banks, who's going to get a lot more time with Okacha's injury. He'll probably have to get Oscar Bridges in there too, who hasn't even played a snap this year. Third and five for Eric Souza. Dumps it off to Jeremiah Moeller. Tackled hard of the first down marker, but forward progress gets him the first down. Now facing third down and 10 for Souza. He throws it to Moeller and it's jumped by Little and here he goes off to the races until he is hit out of bounds and then hit late by Kenny Harrison. That's Souza's second interception. That was a very tight window and the outside pass once again is picked off. So UTEP now with the football and opportunity to make this a two score game. Tomlinson gets a first down. Another facing second down and seven. Mager to the outside. It's caught by Jeffrey. And Nathan Jeffrey gets a first down. Now they're facing a new set of downs with 4.20 to go. Mager, quick pass on the bubble screen. And it's a fumble. It was a backward pass. And Cody Rogers falls on it. He does a little front flip action and picks it up. Huge break for UTSA. Their football now trying to run the ball. We could control the clock and get a touchdown here, but we're not... Um, playing very well in the run game, but here's a great run by Glasgow out of the shotgun getting across the 30 yard line and now new set of downs for Eric Souza now looking to throw outside pass wide open Brandon Freeman but he was out of bounds. Have to stay in bounds after have better field awareness. We hand the ball out of the shotgun to Anthony Banks gets six yards on this sweep but now a third down and four for Souza. 
He's got a running back to his left. He's going to take off, look for the first down, and he dives ahead and gets it. New set of downs coming up. Second down and seven, Eric Souza. And under pressure, he had a man underneath, but I didn't see him because I was watching two defenders about to rip his head off. So third and 14 inside of two minutes to go. Souza wants a screen pass. Glasgow block set up. Not bad, but there was actually one block missed, and he only gets four yards. So fourth and 10, very key down. Souza, it is an, it's an inaccurate pass behind Josiah Monroe. It was the right, actually, that's Kenny Harris. It was the right idea. He was open with the first down, but Souza's pass was just behind him. He was a good decision, an accurate throw. Now the defense is left to play damage control and try to get a turnover or something. But here's Nathan Jeffrey, and our run blitzes are not very well set up. Touchdown UTEP. They take a two-score lead now, 21-10. And it's looking over for the UTSA Roadrunners. Souza goes underneath. He finds Kenny Harrison in the slot. It's a first down towards the 45-yard line. 27 seconds to go now for Souza. In route, Brandon Freeman is wide open into the 35-yard line. As now he can take a shot at the end zone. We have to with a time remaining, only 13 seconds. Souza loads up, goes long, and it is intercepted. UTEP's third on the day. And once again, UTSA drops a game, which they were in in the first fourth quarter, but could not have a successful drive to get the lead back. So 21-10, to 10, we're an 0-6 team, but I think the meat of our schedule is definitely over now. We have not played a team with a losing record. We have played Colorado, which is now ranked 18th in the nation. We played a once-ranked at the time UCF football team. And other than that, our, our schedule has been unforgiving. But now we have Rice coming up, who's a 2-4 and four team, a losing record for the first time. So maybe we'll get our first win of the year as we are halfway through and we are winless and obviously in the bottom of the Conference USA. Here are a couple more videos for you guys to check out. Halo 4 gameplay on the right side, a pretty good game I play in a game of Dominion. On the left side, I have the Oakland Raiders Connected Careers one episode I uploaded yesterday, and what I think is the best episode so far. If you have not seen it yet, click that link and go check it out. It's a great video, I think. And I'll have a lot more coming on the way soon, guys, with UTSA and the Oakland Raiders franchise mode. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, once again, please do leave a like and subscribe if you're new to my channel. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.